Welcome back campers. Here today I have Elijah. Uh, we're going to talk about where we're putting poncho shelters, why do we make those choices, and how. So we're here on this, this road, this trail. This would be an avenue of approach where vehicles, horses, goats, whomever could just come right through here. It kind of channelizes uh, their movement. Now, we obviously wouldn't put a shelter in the middle of something like this. So as you look off into the woods, you see the areas that you can observe from the road. You kind of see where that line stops. And so we're gonna walk up into there because if we're trying to avoid any type of detection, you know, we're gonna need a, a decent amount of standoff distance between mm -hmm. where someone might observe us. So we'll just cruise up in here. Carefully studying the ground lest we step upon a serpent. <laughs> a serpent. So you notice right up there is the crest of the hill. Mm -hmm. So if, if we were up there, if somebody was walking up there, they would be silhouetted against the skyline. Does that make sense? Yeah. So what we want to do is we want to drop down off of that hill, but we also don't want to be all the way in the bottom, which we've kind of achieved out here. So we have this cluster of holly trees that is going to break up the outline of any shelter that you might build. See, this little area, just by itself, by virtue of its location, as you look out, you, know, you can see pretty well, but it's gonna be really hard for them to see you from the road. So what we're gonna do is lay that poncho out, kinda on the ground. Let's see how much area it occupies. And we're gonna take from the high side of the hill and we're gonna pull that down to the low side of the hill because these are holly bushes and they produce leaves that are real sticky. Plus, as you move around in here, if you don't move those leaves, you'll be making a lot of noise. So you wanna get it down just to bear dirt for the time being. Now you can, after the fact, once you've built this shelter, if you wanna go out and get yourself some uh, some white pine limbs and make a little more cush mattress and improve your shelter, that's good. But that's, you just want a place to kind of curl up, you know, a place to lay low. And that's a little more level now, so you won't feel like you're gonna roll down the hill. And you can just cover and conceal that when it comes time to leave. Okay, so next thing, we're gonna determine which is the underside and which is the outside. And you can tell by the seam and by the hood clasp that this is the outside of that. So we're gonna just lay that puppy out, kinda like that. You got a couple of options for stakes. You could make one, but I brought for filming purposes this high vis. Yeah, a lot of people don't do that, this kind of stuff, that step right there. Yeah. See how he's already got the cords attached to the stake? You just, it saves time, but I had to dress yeah. the knot because these are we picked these up the other day. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna find a piece of wood and stick it in there as a toggle and then when you pull see how you pull against that yeah and you, you're always going to drive your stake at a 45 degree angle against the shelter itself so this this uh is a lot faster than tying knots it just mm -hmm. comes out so you'll want to do your four corners just kind of staked out And you want them fairly tight but not super tight you want them you want a little slack and we can always adjust the stakes so we're talking about putting the putting this shelter in a place that's very incon, inconspicuous, right? No one's going to notice it and see it. Well, you notice notice how when we came in here, we kind of had to bob and weave and get down under things and move briars out of the way. Most people and most animals will not do that. They will follow whatever trail already exists. Think of it as the path of least resistance. Mm -hmm. So if you're trying to kind of sit back and watch animals and be in a situation to see the things before they see you, be it people or animals, somewhere like this is going to, is going to really work. And along those same lines though, you're still looking for that same kind of stuff that you would look for in a typical campsite, right? You're not going to have a big yeah. dead giant 
thing above your head that's going to crush you in the middle of the night, right? All the all the rules we talked about before when the last time we went camping still apply. Widowmakers, bur burrowing insects, trails. This how is just close, the next level. Yeah. How close are you to water is important. If you're too far away, you know, that's not good. But if you're right on top of the water, that's also not good. That's actually pretty good right there. You want a little slack. Yeah. All right, go ahead and secure these. Don't step on the poncho. Yeah, try not to step directly on it because it'll uh, it's undo wear on your equipment. You see, we've got this this hole here. Is we're going to cinch that up all the way. See, now we don't have a hole there. And then we're going to come below that point and we're going to twist it a couple times. And then we're going to fold that completely over on itself, kind of like a goose neck. And then we're going to go around it and pull some tension. And then when you get pretty close to the end, we're going to stick a finger or a thumb under there and pull this part through. And that way water will not be able to get in there. I'm going to pull that tight, dress that knot, and you use this loop to uh, suspend and lift with. All right, so there's one. There's one way to do it. Put your hand behind, right there. Yeah, keep your hand there. That's one way. Got it. All right, that, now just untie that, put a toggle through it, and that's number two. That is the second way. The toggle method. Yeah. Yeah. Put your loop down where all that cord is wrapped around, and then cinch to that place. There you go. There you go. And that works good too. So there, there's all kinds of ways to skin a cat. It just depends on your situation. All right, so go ahead and lift it to your desired height. Generally speaking, the lower is, is better. You know, we want it to blend with the surroundings as much as we can. We want it to be low. We want irregular shape, which just achieves that more or less. Very small and secluded. Yep. All right, so here you're gonna to wanna to make yourself a slip knot because if you need to break camp pretty quick, you don't want a knot that's going to be hard to untie. So you make a hole, reach through and grab some, and then in the end you want to dress your knot. You want to kind of press on it, make sure you're good. So when you get ready to break camp, you just grab this loose end, bam, and you're out of there. Just dress you not really good. Yeah, that's it. Awesome. And you've got a little challenge here because you have this, this tree in the way, and that's just part of this, you know, when you get in a thicket. So what you might have to do is kind of cheat that one up the hill more to shift the footprint of the shelter where you can make this one come a little more in line. Does that make sense? Yeah. No two of these will be the same. There's every time there's little variables that will that will occur. So this is gonna, you know, it's gonna give you some protection. But one thing you have to think about in mountainous terrain like this is if it comes uh, a really big downpour, you're gonna have water kind of coming down the hill like so. And that's where that layering we showed you with the mattress will come into play because the water will percolate under that mattress. Another thing that deadfall up there makes a V, it actually will help divert some of the water. You can also take your boot hill or a stone or a stick and make a, a diversion ditch kind of at an angle on the hill where water falls into that little groove. It doesn't have to be super deep. Yeah, literally just take your, your yeah, foot and like, scratch a small yeah. indentation line at an angle above it. Yeah. You know, every shelter location is gonna have little variations like that and you'll have to think your way through each time. 
So for this, for this exercise, we're mainly teaching you how to think about where to put a shelter if you really don't want to be seen. Now, if you're trying to be rescued or something, that's a different, it's a different decision. <laughs> this is the opposite of what you do, yeah. All together. <laughs> yeah. But if I want to lay up and watch the game in the area, or if I want to, if I want to dodge people, like you, li you live kind of in the city, don't you? Somewhere. Yeah. So like uh, outskirts of the city. So it might be that you're trying to come up this way. And as you're walking every night, you don't want to be around the road where the people are because people equal problems, more people equal more problems. And you just want to mind your own business and stay tucked in. You're looking for areas like this. Um, so that's one variation that you can do. Another option, see the downside, everything has advantages and disadvantages. And one thing that I've always been fond of saying is you have to give up something to get something. So this is a good shelter, but when you're inside of it, you can't see out of it, can you? No. So that's that's a problem, potentially. If, now, if you've got more people around, that's not as big of an issue. So something like this, and these guys came from Walmart. See, this is an elastic bungee. Toss me one of those. That has a little plastic ball on the end. So what we might do, if I'm gonna be laying in the shelter on my belly on that mattress that I'm gonna build, I might wanna be looking out. So instead of these uh, pegs that we've got going on in the ground, we'll, we'll take these and that, that's gonna give us some elasticity, which is good because it can kind of move in the wind along with everything else. And so you could just take this and put it through the grommet hole in the poncho and use that toggle system against itself like that, right? and then pull this and either stake it or wrap it and tuck it using that ball. So let's try that variation. And these don't weigh that much. So you could easily have those in your kit as well if that's something that, that appeals to you and you wanna do that later. A couple ways to handle this. One is toggle and go against it. <laughs> and then you've got the ball on the end that you can wrap and tuck instead of tying knots. Another option is to go the reverse of that, let the ball stop on the inside of the grommet and use this as your anchoring point with a stake or with a tie. So I'll, I'll leave it to you how you want to go about it. Or take the ball through that loop. That works you know, too. You can do this. Yeah, you can go through all the way through that and, and make it more where it lives there. There's all types of things you can do with this. So where are we tie them off to? You're going to have to just use terrain will dictate. Sometimes you're going to go to some of these smaller trees. Sometimes you have to have a peg. Sometimes you might use like a dead weight like that. Just hook to that and pull that out and lock it behind here. See how that holds it? Just, you know, limited only to what's around you and real creativity. So you can read books all day, but it all comes down to experiential frame of reference. You have to put your hands on this stuff. And every time you build that experiential knowledge and you're like, okay, this one time I did that, it didn't work well because of that. That type of depth can only be gained by hands-on application. You can't just read survival manuals because no two of these are alike. Every location is going to be different. Every situation is going to dictate something different. So just as an example, if you wanted to keep your poncho staged, you could already have this tied off. You could have these placed on there with the girth hitch, and then you could just use those instead of a knot. You know, you come in here with that and that acts as you're not. Yeah. And you still have the benefit of a little bit of elasticity. And then, you know, to, to break that down, it's that fast and you're gone. And they're hooked up to the poncho already. Probably not gonna lose that. Not gonna lose that, you know. And they're earth tone. Not that that has to be, but I saw them and I'm always gonna choose earth tone over puke orange. You do have to be careful though, because when you raise this, there's a downside. We're creating shadow, we're creating a dark space, and we're creating a straight line, which doesn't really exist in nature, you know. But we might button down all sides except one, if that's our thread area and the road's there, we might decide, hey, we're gonna have a little lift just on the one end because we need to be able to watch that road. And if all this back here is, is a briar bramble, I don't have to worry about somebody approaching that way because people can't, literally can't come through there unless they start snipping and chopping and hacking. So if people are gonna approach, it's gonna be through the road, which leads to the other road. You know, your avenues of approach, understanding lines of drift, channelization, all that kind of stuff. I really, I kind of like this bungee method. Yeah. There's something Some appealing. flexibility to it, yeah. There's something appealing about that, you know? But see, now you got a little airflow you can see up the hill. Now we are creating a dark space, a shadow, 
which violates some of our camouflage principles, but you gotta, gotta, gotta give up something to get something. And if you want airflow and you wanna be able to kind of see, this is, this is the best of both worlds. What we do wanna avoid are like super straight lines like, a, like you would do with a lean-to and uh, you know, doing those things up high. As long as we keep it measured in inches, close to the ground, probably gonna be all right. Something, one thing that I've learned by hunting a lot, especially turkey hunting, is the more comfortable you can make yourself. The less you move. The less you move. And the, the less you move, the more yeah, ninja. That's right. If you're moving around, shuffling around a whole bunch because you're uncomfortable, hot, cold, miserable, whatever it is, laying on a stump, you're gonna move a lot, you're gonna make a lot of noise. So get yourself situated. Even the little things, like the, the little stick in your back that you think, ah, it's no big deal. 15 minutes from now, it's a huge deal. So just eliminate that stuff out the get-go. Well, you know, too, if you're in a driving rain, the steeper the pitch, the better to shed, you know, mm -hmm. get the water off faster. And you, you find little areas like this where we channelize the water, we could stick our canteen cup there as rain catchment, you know, make a, get the full purchase power out of all of it. Yeah. So crawl in there and check it out. What do you think? Like if you lay on your belly, you're looking out this way toward the road. She way bigger than it looks. It is. It's, it's got a lot of real estate in there. It's enough. It's enough to get it done. Yeah. Can you see out toward that road? Oh, yeah. Okay, so you can see the road. Now, we're going to walk to the road and see if we can see you. All right. You know, a lot of what the location is the observation that you have on the thread area. Like, he's going to see us 100%. He's already still. He's dialed into this environment. The person that's moving through that environment is at the disadvantage. And so that's the main thing. He's got time to grab that, untie one knot, and run. You know, just drag it all up and go. He's right there. And you cannot, even if you you did have a target indicator in there and he made some noise or, you know, violated light discipline, and you were to address on him, head that way. You're not going to do it fast because there's so much undergrowth and briars and all of that. And he has a, an escape route to the rear. And that's the other thing you have to think of when you choose these shelters. Like, okay, if I do want to pop out of here, where am I going? If they come from this way, I'm going there. If they come from this way, I'm going there. And have some of that already built in. Utilize the micro terrain, especially in the mountains. If you can get over that hill, let's say your location is here. If you can quickly get over that hill, get around that hill, and put dirt between you and them, and then do irregular movements, their chances of finding you are, are pretty slim because you're going to be one up. Yeah. As far as locations go, and that's pretty much, I'd, and there's that. <laughs> I didn't like that tree much. It's already girdled. It's going to die anyway. Yeah. It's right on the side of the trail. But as far as locations goes, that's just about ideal. Uh, on a scale of one to, one to sneaky. It's sneaky. It's free. It's way up there. Pretty dang sneaky. <laughs> and how old is Elijah? Uh, Elijah's sixteen now. Yeah. So you know you've got you've got the inherent sneakiness of a sixteen year old <laughs> coupled with a little training. Now he's dangerous. Now he's dangerous. So could you see us really clearly? Huh? About fifty fifty. About fifty fifty percent vision. Oh yeah. That's yeah, still pretty good. Yeah, pretty sneaky. So I don't always carry um, stakes. Actually, very rarely do I carry stakes, so you can make them super easy, but a lot of people get carried away with how they make their stakes. I pick up any, basically, stick that's kind of pinky finger-sized up off the ground, something like this. Doesn't matter. Doesn't have to be pretty. Doesn't have to be perfect. As long as it's got some structural integrity that's not super easy to break, it'll work. And then you just take your knife, that's all it needs right there. That is a stake. Mm -hmm. That's it. Some people take all this special time and they carve them and make them perfect. They round the tops. If you're on a ground that's really, really hard and you need to pound it in the ground with, with something like a baton or a, or a back of an ax or something, that's one thing. But here, this is going to work just fine. So you'd make four of these. That took me three seconds to make one, right? Mm -hmm. You'd make four of these babies and that's how you'd stake it out. So on the, on the corners of my ponchos, I would, I would already have this staged and ready to go so I wouldn't have to do it in the field. I take a short length of bank line like this, 
I put it through the corner. This is not the corner, but I put it through the corner of my poncho and just do a simple overhand knot. It just needs to be big enough to slip a stake through. That's it. So if you've got these tie outs already ready to go, it just saves you the time when it's, when it's time to get the thing done. And then you just take your stake that you've made, put it at that 45 degree angle like we talked about with everything else, stab it in the ground, and you're done. And then when you're ready to move, that's it. And that stays on there, it's ready to go. I know Alan doesn't prefer having things dangling off of the corners and stuff of his ponchos. Um, but well, if I, I'm going to stage one for shelter, I might. Yeah. But, uh, well, even the ones that I wear, like I, I only, yeah. I, I'm a pretty minimal kind of, kind of thing. When I go into the woods, I typically have a poncho as my rain gear and my shelter. Um, even the ones that I wear, I would have a short little length like this on the corners. Mm. I haven't had any issues with it getting hung up. If, if one day, if I do, then maybe I'll switch over to not doing it that way. But for now, I like that. Um, and then I'd rig it up exactly this, this same way, unless I wanted to do a plow type shelter and i'll show you how to do that right now so oh, if you had a crotch of a tree a forked tree you'd stick the stick through here and that locks it in as easy as that mm -hmm. right that's simple that's not going to go anywhere and this this is what i would prefer if the terrain the trees and stuff lend itself to it however if you're in a spot kind of like this it's a little bit cramped and you're trying to be real super sneaky you might just have to go with what you've got and that's going to be maybe this big tree right here and i want to take my the corner of my poncho directly that way towards where Alan's sitting. So what I would do is I would take another short piece of cordage. So grab a piece of cordage out of your pocket. You can do this a thousand different ways. It doesn't matter. One of the easiest ways I've, I've taught my, my son, Elijah, mm -hmm. the other Elijah to do it because he knows how to tie his shoes, right? Mm -hmm. It's everybody knows how to tie the shoes. You don't have to learn a new knot. I just literally take it to the tree and I have him tie his shoes on the tree. And once he's got that, or once you've got that, just a bow knot. So once you've got your simple knot here in the tree, you got this as the corner, the first attachment. Now you're just gonna stake out the other three corners, right? So make yourself three stakes, real expedient fashion. Don't have to be pretty. Need to be maybe pinky finger size, something like that. Maybe about six inches long, something like that. As long as they're sturdy enough to work, that, that'd be fine. So make three of them as quick as you can. And if you're trying to be sneaky, it's good to pick up stuff, dead stuff off of the ground, as opposed to cutting green branches up high where people can see that. Yep. And sometimes if the ground is soft enough, that's good enough. You don't even have to sharpen them, but I'll go ahead and put a little, just a small point on each one. So you've already got your gooseneck in the poncho hood, so rain's not gonna get in that, that's good. You've already got that secured out, so now you just take this baby, and you're gonna pull it relatively tight. You don't have to pull it super tight, it doesn't need to be real, um, real taut, but just a little bit of tension in there, and then you're gonna stake it in at that 45 degree angle like you do, like we did before. Now in the summertime, if I if I anticipate rain, right? I like this setup because it gives you a lot of co coverage, easily three sides coverage, um, but it also allows ventilation so you can dry things out a little bit too. So maybe you gotta go between those trees, who knows? Make it work. Might have to tie that corner to a tree, who knows? Whatever gets it done, as long as it's not gonna collect water. Now I've also used, if there's nothing easily uh, to attach the hood to overhead, nothing to string it up to. I've also used a prop stick on the inside. You just got to make sure you use something like your hat or something to protect it so you don't poke a hole in your poncho. But that works pretty good too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Excellent. So the shelter's a bit saggy, got some swag to it, but that's not a bad thing because it minimizes those straight lines that your eye clearly picks up on if you're looking at a distance. Mm -hmm. If you see so, like a horizontal straight line in the distance, your eye immediately goes to it and recognizes that. And this doesn't have a whole lot of that going on, so that's a good thing. Um, but you can still get, get in there, crawl in there and check it out. Oh yeah. 
Yeah, right? It's pretty cozy, pretty comfy. And you've got some ventilation in the summertime if it's raining on you and it's hot and humid, you know? You know how it is in the summer yeah, here. Oh, yeah. um, you can still get some breathability going on. And this is why we love the poncho so much is because it's, it's, it's just so versatile. It's not just your rain gear, it's your shelter. And then it can be used for, you know, endless other things as well. Um, packs up easy. They're pretty durable. Um, they're ready-made camouflage, ready to go. If you want to cover something up, I've used it. <laughs> Believe it or not, I've used a poncho to conceal my motorcycle a time or two. So, so there is that. So those are some ways you can set up a shelter with cordage. But if, if you want to do the most bare minimal thing and maintain the lowest profile and it's fast setup and fast breakdown, we're going to lay the poncho out because you've already got your hood gooseneck where there's not going to be water infiltration there. So just lay this thing out lengthwise like so. Okay. You're going to put half of it on the ground. Okay, now lay down on this half. Okay. That, that way is uphill. So if you get a storm, come on up where all your body's on this thing. So if it's going to rain, water's going to come from up the hill, right? Yeah. So all you got to do is roll up in this thing and face downhill. Get your head and all your body tucked in there. So you don't really need to do all the cordage and all the stuff if you just want to crash with it real quick. You just curl up in there like so. Now, if you want a little more um, heat retention, let's say it's cold weather, you can take these buttons and just clip them together like a sleeping bag and leave the first two up here open as a flap to get in and out of. Hmm. And you basically have a bivy bag. How long did that take? Five seconds. That's like a five second setup. Yeah. So sometimes this is situationally appropriate and you don't have to worry about water because we put the solid part to the hill. Make sense? Yeah. I've, I was saying off camera, I slept in exactly that during a pretty big storm. And I faced, instead of facing up a hill, there was no hill, it was flat, but the wind was coming from that direction. That's yeah. where the rain, driving rain was coming from. And that same thing kept me pretty dry the whole night. So I'll go ahead while you're there. I'll just work some of these buttons real fast for the sake of time where you can kind of see what you would have. And you could add a poncho liner or any other layers you had to this to, uh, to create kind of a sleeping bag situation. But like in the winter, you know, you would want to seal this if it's real windy. And you still get, you know, you got places where your body heat can come out and it can breathe a little bit, not get too clammy. I have slept in plastic shelters and things where it just it gets so clammy you know the mylar the mylar baby bags yeah those things wake just, up wet yeah you just condensation mm -hmm. see so you got that part sealed up you got the top part open mm -hmm. where, where you can kind of thermoregulate and get out of it quickly if you had to you just pop the buttons open mm -hmm. and you know if you're totally covered up sleeping like that unless you're snoring really loud and somebody walks past they're not going to see you here that's about the stealthiest shelter you can build that, right there yeah. You know, we always want to build a thing for shelter. Sometimes it's just, what are we sheltering against? This time of year, you know, rain, a little breeze, and this, this checks all those boxes. The downside might be if you've got a lot of, like in a jungle, you're dealing with bullet ants, stuff like that. In the jungle, you don't want to be on the ground. you got to be mm, up, mm, you know, mm. raised platform, <laughs> hammock, something like that. Yep. But in this part of the world, this would work. How's that feel? I'm already getting hot. It's basic, simple. You see, you're already getting the heat. Mm. Yeah. See, it, it works. Yeah, I mean, you might, you, you, if you're living like this, you're not going to be super comfortable, and yeah. you're just going to have to accept that as a fact. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. There are there going to be bugs on the ground? Sure. You're going to get daddy long, daddy long leg crawling in your head in the middle of the night? Sure. You're going to get a tick maybe crawling on you, but that's why we do tick checks on a regular, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. And again, just check your ground before you put this down. That mm. anything sharp, you know, try to. Try to maintain your equipment best you can. Cool. Foam sleep pad underneath that. That'd yep. be handy too. Yep. Pile up leaves. Yeah. So another thing you could do: button it all together, cram leaves in there, and use that as a mattress. So just if you're creative, one piece of equipment like this, you can utilize it in so many different ways. And what we're trying to do is just put some seeds 
plant those seeds in your mind. Mm -hmm. And if you get out living in an austere environment, you're like, oh yeah, I got this option, that option. But as far as traveling light, when you have things that will do more than one thing, multi-functionality, the poncho is probably second to none in that regard. I mean, they'll do so much. And speaking of that, next thing is we're gonna show you how to make a flotation device out of this. You swim? Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> How do you feel about leeches? <laughs>